despite the fact that much of Europe is grounded, we were actually able to fly in overnight coming from the west through a gap in the ash cloud that's blowing mostly the other direction. The volcano is actually, it's, it's obscured by the clouds. It's through the mountains just behind me there there and it's throwing off huge chunks from a glacier that it's melting. We've got one here I want to show you. Look at this. Look at this huge ice cube. It is throwing off thousands and thousands of cubes like this one and you can see it's littered this area behind me here and actually flooded this river through here which has flooded much of this valley here filled with a great many farms. There's a lot of farmland here and people that have been affected and beyond here the impact is even worse. Eyjafjallá Jörgert's crater is just a mile and a half wide, but it's wreaking havoc on an area now over 1,200 miles. With an ash cloud so massive it can be seen from space. On the ground, the melting glacier has triggered flash floods, and thick layers of ash swirl through the air, covering homes and cars. And the volcano shows little sign of letting up. This could potentially be a problem for weeks to even months. The last time it erupted in 1821, it lasted for over a year and triggered another eruption at a nearby volcano called Katla. So far, Katla remains dormant, but this volcano has caused plenty of damage on its own. The volcano is covered by a glacier, and that, volcanologists say, compounds the problem. Normally, in Icelandic volcanic eruptions, the ash doesn't go this high because the gases come out easily. But in this case, we have magma interacting with glacial meltwater quite explosively, which lifts the ash to great heights. Meanwhile, winds over Iceland were in just the right place to carry that ash over Europe, a torrent of particles that are each only two millimeters thick. But these tiny hot pieces of rock, glass, and sand taken together and sucked into a jet engine can melt, causing the engine to fail. In 1982, a British Airways flight lost all four engines due to ash, but got its power back after diving to a lower altitude, as illustrated in this National Geographic documentary. And in 1989, Alaska's Mount Readout damaged a 747, but it also landed safely. Pilots have a very difficult time detecting it. It's, uh, you can see uh, the high concentrations with your eye, but by the time you get to those high concentrations, you've already flown through too much of it. So this is about as close as you can actually get to the volcano right now. And the bridge that we're standing along right here has been shut down. And just on the other side of that bridge, it's only emergency vehicles that you see going through here. Just on the other side, authorities have actually carved out a huge portion of the road to try to let some of this river flow through to try to alleviate some of the pressure because the glacier is just throwing off those huge chunks of ice I've been showing you. And you can see some more of them over here and it's creating a lot of problems. So they're hoping cutting that part of the road out will let off some of the pressure and alleviate some of the flooding problems, which is the biggest impact right here. The volcanologists, the scientists who are studying this thing, they have a great many sensors up on the volcano there, and they are studying it and monitoring it right now on guard for any possible future eruptions later today or ongoing throughout the next many weeks. Robin? Yeah, it could last for, for many, many weeks. Neil, we know the problems the ash is causing all across the gro uh, globe, but what about right there in Iceland? What's the situation? It's interesting, right here in, at the base of the volcano, farmlands and small towns have been affected, but the majority of the population of this country lives about two hours to the north, and they are not affected. The ash is actually blowing the other direction, hmm. causing all those problems in Europe, but for them, life is going on as normal. They have their own share of problems. They don't need that. All right there, Neil Karlinski in Iceland. Thanks so much.